Elizabeth Raposo, you uh, produced the boxing drama Creed Three, and are also the president of Michael B. Jordan's Outlier Society production company. Uh, so first off, uh, what made you decide to take on that role at Outlier Society? Um, well, after um, leaving my post as a, a longtime Paramount executive and in my most recent uh, time there was the president of production, um, after I left Paramount uh, with a full heart uh, and fond memories, um, one of my first phone calls was from Michael and he was building his company out in a really exciting way. And, you know, we all love Michael and he's a very convincing man. So it was an easy yes. Uh, and, and was Creed 3 already sort of in the works uh, as you came on board? Yes. So he had committed to directing and there was already a wonderful script by Zach Balin and Keenan Kugler uh, with a story by the franchise originator, the incredible uh, Brian Kugler. And so the train was on the tracks uh, and the studio gave us the mission to get the movie made, start prep right away. So we we went into high gear and it was an exciting time. And, and had you had... Uh familiarity with the the Rocky franchise, the Creed franchise before? Or was this, you know, sort of like a, a, a trial by fire? No, this was, look, this was a dream come true. You know, I, um, a lot of the times I find myself uh, realizing that I'm doing my job for the 10 year old version of myself. So this was one of those moments to be able to be a producer on a historic 47 plus uh, franchise that is beloved. Um, I knew that uh, it was going to be um, a big responsibility, but one I was so proud and um, um, humbled to take on. Uh, and, and what was it like working with uh, Michael B. Jordan, you know, since he's wearing these multiple hats, he's, you know, producing, directing, and starring in this film? Yeah, it's a it's a great question. Um, you know, the the number one thing for us uh, was basically Michael's time management because he was pulling triple duty, as you say. You know, directing, acting, producing. Um, the focus of our day was really how to maximize his time. Um, and since uh, building a time machine wasn't possible, we did everything we could to, you know, short of building a time machine for him. Um, so much of the work that it went, went into building the schedule also took into consider consideration his training time because Adonis Creed through the top of the movie and the end of the movie was, it had to be in heavyweight champ uh, fight shape. So we had to build a schedule for Michael where he could handle the fights uh, early in the schedule so that he didn't have to keep up the momentum of the rather rigorous and intense training. Um, and he could go from having to be in heavyweight champ shape to just being in his regular shape and focusing on the more dramatic and, uh, and other, the, uh, sorry, the dramatic scenes in the film and then other directing responsibilities. So everything really went into the time management, um, you know, for him. Um, and those boxing scenes are are very impressive, uh, just the way they're shot. They look so seamless, and yet there's so much choreography and so many angles. Uh, how logistically challenging are are those scenes? They are challenging, but I will say they're incredibly fun to uh, execute and plan. Um, you know, going all the way back to early, early days of prep, we were in a warehouse out in Van Nuys with our stunt team and our um and our department heads and it was our our prep offices were re were quite literally a warehouse with a boxing ring so early early um sort of almost an r and d phase of what the fights would look like how to place the cameras what to do that brought a new way of storytelling into the into the ring because we also knew that while people were coming to this movie to see, yes, a boxing movie, we knew we had to give them a new experience in the ring. And that was part of the big challenge as well. And, uh, you know, is, is there a particular, uh, you know, challenge that was executed on this film that you're the most proud of, uh, uh, you know, that, that made it to the screen? 
I think what um, what I'm most proud of on behalf of the entire team is that Michael really had a vision for a big fantasy element in the final fight of the film, um, which takes place at Dodger Stadium. And what happens in the final fight is that the two fighters end up having um, a shared vision of past experiences. So the crowd falls away and then all of a sudden you're in um, a fantasy space. And I will say that Michael, from the first moment we started talking about it, really believed that the audience would would buy in and go for it. And every frame and every element of design that went into that sequence uh, only continued to elevate it. But it was there from the beginning in his head. And, and it the final product, I think, is just extraordinary. And I'm really proud of him and what the team did around him to help execute. Uh, and the film was uh, actually shot on IMAX cameras. Uh, what was the, you know, what effect did that have on on production, or, or was it just a simple uh, kind of a, a different way of doing it? Well, it 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 actually helped us orient how we wanted to enter the fights because when we when we decided to do the film for IMAX program, we we wanted there to be a seamless transition into the fights as if you were stepping into the Coliseum to see, you know, great fighters uh, uh, collide. And so it, it was really more of a visual discussion of how to create spectacular transitions that would open up the frame. And then you feel, you would feel like you were placed inside the, um, inside the stadium. And I think between Michael and our incredible DP Kramer Morgenthau, our production designer, Jimmy Nasa, everyone, everyone really got on board with that. And I think delivered a, you know, some beautiful visuals. Uh, and what's uh, one of the things that's kind of remarkable about the, this franchise, um, and it doesn't always happen this way, is that each Creed film has made successively more money. Um, so it seems yeah. to really be connecting with uh, with audiences and growing as it goes along. What do you think it is about these this story, these characters, uh, uh, that audiences are are you know can, coming back to? Yeah, I mean, I think. Uh... I think I think many things. I think the franchise is beloved. I think the creative team around this particular franchise between Ryan Coogler, Erwin Winkler, Michael, they they bring a certain um uh you know elevated sense to their material and so people keep returning because they they feel connected to these characters. And then I think for this particular movie I what I believe made it connect with people was that, you know, on a thematic basis, it's really about, in my opinion, that no matter what your past is or what you've experienced or what you've done, that you can, you can move through that. You can move past that. You can overcome that, that everyone, no matter what they've gone through, you can overcome something. And I think that honestly is the most universal element um, of all. And I think perhaps that is why this movie connected. I don't know, it's why it connected for me. I, yeah, I loved it. <laughs> and uh, in general, how would you compare the experience of, you know, you know, working at Outlier to uh, all the work you did at Paramount? Uh, you know, is, is it a similar kind of uh, experiences? You know, I think actually I get this, I get asked this question a lot for me, it's actually quite similar. I, you know, I loved my time at Paramount. I perhaps because of the history of the studio who that had many former producers as its leader, whether it was Robert Evans or Sherry Lansing, um, all of my Paramount colleagues um, always felt like really entrepreneurial souls. And I feel like that was something that I really connected with. And on all the franchise and large scale movies that I had the honor of working on all those years, whether it was Mission Impossible or Top Gun or Interstellar or Star Trek, I I always felt very connected to the artists who were making those movies, even though I was technically their executive and not their producer. So 
for me, the job has a lot of the same rhythms and perhaps that's why, you know, it was a more organic transition. Well, congratulations on uh, your work at Outlier and your work specifically on Creed 3. Um, thank you so much for talking to me about it today. Thank you. Thanks for having me.